the way you play your chord progressions is more important than the chords you choose. In this video, I'm going to reveal why this is important, three ways in which you can play your chord progressions, and how this can apply to any instrument or software. The human voice is an amazing thing. It can shout your emotions with power and volume, or whisper your secrets with clarity and warmth. The infinite possibilities for expressing yourself with your voice are something that people take for granted. But did you know that it is also possible to express your chord progressions in many different ways? The thing that is often overlooked with chord progressions is that it is how you play them that can have the biggest impact. You might be constantly looking for the new sound or unique progression that will unlock your songwriting, when all you needed to do was consider how you're playing. This is important because it allows you almost unlimited ways to play progressions, opening up your creative choices and expression. This will transform how you think about chords in your songs. And like the human voice having different ways of creating sound, there are three distinct ways you can think about playing your chord progressions. The first way is like shouting or yelling at the top of your voice. You shout to project your voice, to be heard over loud noises or long distances. You might also shout to shock or surprise someone. It can also be a result of emotions, such as anger or grief. In a similar way, playing your chords in blocks can achieve a similar effect. Block chords are the simplest play style to understand. You play all of the chord notes at the same time and then sustain the chord until the next chord change. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I often use this style. It is a good way to hear the whole sound of a chord and understand how a progression works. But it has a major drawback. It is boring. It lacks subtlety and can be hard to make more interesting. Imagine listening to someone shouting a whole sentence. It becomes tiring to listen to as everything is on one level with no real change in dynamics. I'm going to use a simple 1-4-5-1 progression in the key of C major to demonstrate the different play styles. This uses the chords C major, F major and G major. I'll provide examples on piano and guitar, but what you learn can be applied to any instrument or software you may be composing in. Block chords often benefit from instruments that have control over expression and sustain, like brass or strings. This can give them enough dynamics and movement to maintain interest. You could also consider effects on your guitar to achieve something similar. Let's listen to some block chords in action now, with one chord per bar. So the shortcomings of block chords are clear, but what can be done to make them more interesting? One technique is to add a leading note or tone at the end of each block to lead smoothly into the next block. This could be a note from the next chord or a nearby scale note. I'll play them as the highest note for just a quarter of the bar to lead into the next block in the next example. If you want an easy to use guide with seven simple songwriting keys, as well as six popular chord progressions, then head to majorkeychords.com and download your free copy today. Link is also in the description. Block chords can also be repeated rhythmically to add a bit more interest. These rhythmic blocks break up the static chord and can bring some movement into the progression. Rhythmic blocks are the foundation of a lot of rhythm guitar. If you think about how a guitarist plays a chord, they finger it with one hand, and whilst that remains in place, they play a rhythm with the other hand. It's up to you how to break up the large block. Maybe there's a rhythm in other parts of your song that you can repeat. Here's an example with a few different rhythms. What would you consider the opposite of shouting? Many would say whispering. Where shouting was used to be loud and heard by many, whispering is quieter and more intimate. You whisper in someone's ear to tell them a secret or to stop anyone from listening into your conversation. You saw that block chords were like shouting out your chord progressions, and the whispering equivalent would be arpeggios. An arpeggio is a type of broken chord in which the notes that a chord are made of are individually sounded in a progressive rising or descending order. Arpeggios on keyboard instruments may be called rolled chords. Think of it like breaking apart your block chord into its component notes. 
Like someone whispering, arpeggios are gentler and often more intimate. They are great at changing the mood of your progression, maybe in collaboration with a tempo change. That being said, you might also see people playing them at blistering speed on the electric guitar. Arpeggios add interest and rhythmic flow inside chord progressions. There are lots of different ways you can approach your arpeggios. I'll provide some inspiration now, but you can take this in many different directions. What happens when you don't feel like shouting or whispering? What's the most common way to communicate with your voice? That would be your speaking or conversation voice. It's generally at a moderate volume that you can sustain for long periods of time. It can offer the directness and attention of shouting without the listener fatigue. At the same time, it allows enough range and subtlety to offer some intimacy like whispering. This is like the concept of a comping rhythm, which is the third way to play your chord progressions. Comping is a shortened term used in jazz for accompanying playing chords in a varied and interesting rhythm. The idea of playing your chord progressions in an interesting and varied way doesn't need to be reserved just for jazz, so you can give this a go in any genre. You can think of a comping rhythm like a blend of the block playing style and arpeggios. This gives you a unique rhythmic pattern which will have a mix of single notes, short blocks and dual notes with a constant switching of note lengths. It can also bring in other scale notes and tones and even notes from outside of the key. But to begin you can just focus on the notes for each chord and develop some variations. This style is often heard on piano and guitar. It may be easier playing a finger style on the guitar to rapidly change up your playing but it can still be achieved playing with a pick and all of this can be programmed in MIDI if you're composing on the computer. Here's the faithful 1-4-5-1 progression again with a few basic comping ideas on piano and guitar. I'll just use chord notes here to show how even three notes per chord have many different ways to be played. Whether you like shouting, whispering or talking, what matters the most is your ability to communicate how you feel with other people. You can think of composing your songs in a similar way. Experiment with the different playing styles and find one that you think best conveys the emotion or feel you are aiming for. There are no right or wrong approaches. I'm going to provide a slightly longer, more varied progression example now. In reality, you're likely to switch up the style between song sections. You might also change within the progression itself, as I do here. It will also allow you to hear how this can apply to any progression progression in any key. Here I'll explore a progression that includes inverted, suspended and dominant 7th chords. It has a descending bass line which drives part of the feel of the song along with the different play styles. Also note how I changed the length of chords throughout. In the earlier examples I played one chord per bar but this soon becomes boring and this is an easy way to create interest without changing your playing style. Follow along and see if you can spot where the playing style changes. I have to admit at this point that you might have just wasted your time. The thing is, everything I just told you is completely useless if you don't know how to create major key chord progressions. Watch the video on screen next to learn a really simple chord progression system.